Sarah Murphy was born to former slaves in northwest Georgia in 1892, the tenth of eleven children. Sarah's mother died when she was four years old, and Sarah took on the role of mother for her younger sibling, James. Her younger brother was only two, and she ended up being the motherly caretaker of him, and I think she's always had the mothering instinct in her. Sarah was bright, and by age 12 was earning money for her family by selling mail-order flavorings, helping her father and stepmother purchase a 20-acre tract of land. At this time, African-American women were not encouraged to pursue an education, but Sarah had a hunger for knowledge and went as far as she could in a nearby country school before leaving for Rome to attend an industrial school for blacks. During her summers, she traveled Polk County teaching as many as 100 pupils at a time and helping to establish four schools. Sarah wanted to attend what she called the Big Negro University Complex, Spelman Seminary, later called Spelman College and her brother James worked on the railroad to help her get there. She educated herself at Spelman College and then became a teacher and, and came out to Cedartown and started an orphanage and a school. That rich history actually now takes place at Murphy Harps Academy. She had thoughts that it would be so easy just to leave the country farmhouse and stay down there where there was good jobs and money, but she come back home. And I think there's a lot of people today that are blessed and are here because of her. Sarah returned home to start a school in a church building in Grady. As an independent school, there was no public funding, and parents were expected to pay 50 cents a month for their children's education, though very few had the money. At age 28, Sarah married Marion Shug Murphy, and they saved enough money to buy an old house on an acre of land, where they built a one-room building to serve as a school for grades K through 12. Sarah loved the children she taught, and her greatest joy was when she gave birth to a daughter in 1925 and named her Davinia. Never one to turn down a student whose parents couldn't pay, Sarah soon found herself taking on much more. I think it all just fell in her lap. The first six children that she got, the mother, due to complications from childbirth, was on her deathbed, and she requested Sarah to take her children. I think Sarah had nearly 50 children in her home, I read just recently that on a monthly salary of $25, she was able to somehow keep up with these children and, and feed them and clothe them and do all the things that are necessary for these young people. Well, she had a good heart. She didn't like to see nobody suffer. No kid. She'd take them in. If you didn't have clothes on your back, she'd make sure you had clothes on your back. Tragically, in 1934, Davinia died at the age of nine of blood poisoning leaving Sarah inconsolable with grief. Mama Sarah's home became known as a place where children with no other alternative would be welcome. She applied to incorporate her home, naming it the Sarah Davinia Murphy Home, and in 1935 it received a state charter. But she raised them kids in let me see, her house. Was, she had four rooms, big old front porch, and big old back porch, and uh, she put rooms on the back porch and made it up to uh, everybody had room to sleep. I read uh, that, that Sarah's motto was, turn no one away. I think I heard one time that she actually accepted six children at one time from the same family when the father had died and then the mother died and thereafter giving birth to this, this sixth child. Amazing how that legacy now lives on with their names attached to it. In 1946, Sarah won a thousand dollar Good Neighbor Award on a national radio show. And the exposure brought in donations, enabling them to add a new building to the compound. Campbell's carried her up to uh, Chicago to receive a thousand dollar prize money. I'm sure that come in handy with the family operating the home. In 1950, a wood stove started a fire and completely destroyed the home. Sarah, Shug, and the children moved into the one-room school building. Over the next couple of months, resources started coming in from Polk County, the state, the country, and even the world. Several months before groundbreaking on the new building, Shug passed away. And eight months later, as the new building was about to be occupied, Sarah died. Back in the area of depression, you know, there were a lot of people whose lifespans were very short and they were working, you know, unending type of hours and it took a toll and so it wouldn't be un unusual 
for uh, you know, the, the man of the family to die, and then the woman of the family soon thereafter to die. Without Sarah's leadership and vision, the home floundered. In 1961, the women's division of the Methodist Church took over the property, and in 1984, it merged with the Ethel Harps home. Sarah and Ethel both were wonderful women, uh, and their, their dreams actually came together to form Murphy Harps Children's Centers in 1984. So that's when we became this niche type of organization. We, we serve those children who really don't thrive in the traditional foster care model. It has changed from what I've known it to be. They're still helping children. I think she would be pleased with having her name attached to it. We are so thankful to them for their vision. And uh, we hope today to carry on you know, the vision for another 100 years.